yes guys, it's another one of these. And you know how these all go. So let's just dive straight in. Wait. I don't say that, do I? You believe that. Somebody else said that in a video. I I think it was called you know Lost Media Update. I'm a criminal. 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 Toby the Pup Shorts, 1930 to 1931. In 1930, Charles Mintz decided that he was going to make a series of his own. He hired Dick Humor and Sid Marcus, who were former animators for Fleischer Studios, to work with Art Davis on a new series. The team created Toby the Pup, who followed Bimbo in personality and appearance, mostly looking similar to Bimbo's Dizzy Dishes design. And the series was distributed via RKO Radio Pictures. The first short, called The Museum, aired on August 19, 1930 and scored success. Eleven shorts then followed it until the series was discontinued in 1931 because of RKO distributing Van Buren Studios productions. Only seven out of the twelve films are known to exist, with the shorts The Fiddler, The Miner, The Bug House, Aces Up and The Ball Thrower being completely lost. The shorts Toby the Milkman, Down South, Halloween, The Museum, and Toby the Showman have all been uploaded to the internet, but Toby the Showman is missing its original score. You can watch the shorts in the description below. The short, Circus Time, is currently being held by UCLA, but it is only the score and not the actual footage. The sound print has not been released to the public online or offline yet. And finally, in 2005, a Texas resident named Toby Heidel found the Toby short The Brown Derby in a private collection. The 16mm print was given to Jerry Golden, who is now restoring the footage. At this stage, it is unknown if the short will be released after its restoration is complete. All we can do is hope. Dora the Explorer Pilots, 1997 and 1999. To be honest, you would be hard pressed to find someone who hasn't heard of Dora the Explorer. Although it is ended, it is referred as the King or Queen of Nick Jr. and it is the longest running Nick Jr. show to date. In 1997 and 1999, two pilots were made in order to sell the show. The first pilot was finished in December 1997 and was shared in the form of private viewing. The plot was that Dora and Boots go to the beach. And that's it. The story would be recycled for the actual show. A one minute clip of the pilot was found on the Funline Animation website on August 21st, 2018 by Lost Media Wiki Discord user Infinite Gates, but it was blocked by Viacom on copyright grounds. However, it was recorded and saved before it was deleted and was shared on YouTube by other users. You can watch the clip in the description. In 1999, a small short test pilot was created. Not much is known about the pilot, but a 16 second long walk cycle of the pilot was uploaded to YouTube by YouTube user Dylan Yi. It features Boots' pilot design and Dora's final design, with Dora and Boots constantly staring blankly at the viewer while strolling, with no audio whatsoever. It's pretty chilling when you think about it. It's unknown if there's any more information about the pilot than that, but apparently the plot was that Dora and Boots were making a journey to a giant cupcake, but it is unknown what plot this belongs to, since the pilot was a, a test and not an actual pilot like the 1997 pilot. Freaks, Director's Cut, 1932 after the major success that was Todd Browning's Dracula from 1931, Todd Browning started working on his next horror film called Freaks, which was the story of a trapeze artist named Cleopatra who decides to marry a circus midget named Hans after she finds out that he's dim-witted. She plans to steal Hans' money and run off with her real lover, Hercules, which is a strong man. However, the Freaks, Hans' friends, decide to band together to extract excruciating revenge on the pair. The film is memorable for using real-life sideshow performers, including a limbless man, two conjoined twin sisters, and a deformed man more well known as Slitzy. The film didn't do that well when it was released. It was considered by some a box office bomb, and it was so controversial that it brought Todd Browning's career to a swift close. However, it is considered nowadays as a creepy classic, and it stands at 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. But with a controversial film like Freaks, it can't be more worse than it was, right? 
In 1932, a test audience saw a director's cut of the film, and many were appalled. Mostly because of the darker ending to the film, where Tree is struck by lightning and crashes onto Cleo, and the freaks all jump onto her. And as Hercules climbs back into the carriage, other freaks jump onto him, and the film cuts to black. Three years later, Venus and Froso visit Madame Tetralini, and Tetralini shows the two a special exhibit, which shows Cleo turn into an awful chicken creature, and it shows Hercules, who was castrated and was now a singing soprano. Other cuts included Venus and Hercules both getting bigger towards each other, to the point where Hercules tries to murder Venus. Scenes cut short, small comedy scenes, and scenes where the relationship between Venus and Froso were shown. Due to this horrid ending, the test audience only commented in the negative, one woman threatening to sue MGM for the movie apparently making her have a miscarriage. This ended up with MGM taking the footage and splicing and dicing the whole entire movie. Due to the lack of preservation, it was most likely destroyed. It is unknown if MGM has a copy in its vault to this day. Stan, Uncut Video, 2000. In 2000, rapper Eminem released his third album, Marshall Mathers LP, preceded by the Slim Shady LP and Infinite, which was another major success, including classic singles like The Real Slim Shady and The Way I Am. But we're going to be focusing on the third single of the album, Stan, which is referred by most critics as a masterpiece of storytelling. The story stars Stanley Mitchell, a really big Eminem fan, who writes him a letter, but Eminem re never responds. Stan writes a second letter, going over how annoyed he is about how Eminem never wrote back to him, and how he thinks that he ignored him and his little brother, Matthew Mitchell. After six months of no answer, Stan loses the plot and puts his pregnant girlfriend in the trunk of his car while drunk driving at 90 speed. He screams into a cassette he's recording while gurgling vodka, and then he crashes off a broken bridge and drowns. When Eminem is finally able to write back to Stan, he realizes that he heard his death on the news. The song ends with him saying, Damn. A music video was shot for the rap, but some of its more interesting angles and shots were cut out of the MTV version. These included scenes where Stanley's gurgling the vodka he drank, and the scenes where Stan's girlfriend is in the trunk of Stanley's car. However, on September 24th, 2018, Lost Media Wiki Discord user Kenaizo found the uncut music video on the BAV MTV website, link down below. There was a scene where San's girlfriend was gagged by him in the music video, but it appears that the BV MTV video does not have this scene. The scene was censored very widely and Dido, who played San's girlfriend, has stated that the scene has become rare. It is unknown if this scene will ever be found, but all we can do is cross our fingers. Okay, so um, so uh, basically, there's a story. Uh, I was viewing uh, Fallout's piece of media three, and then one of the uh, comment, uh, someone comments and uh, says, um, "God, I love this kid." And then somebody like was also like, uh, "Kid, this isn't bad, to be honest." And I didn't know how to feel since with um where I came from, kid was an insult, which and I didn't know how to feel. I didn't know how to feel insulted or to feel happy. And then I was like, I, w I was supposed to feel happy. It's really fucking dumb uh, to uh, get appalled over some someone saying, kid, this isn't bad, TBH, or God, I love this kid. It's, it's, it's kind of stupid. I don't want to sound...